Now, there would be certain features of Excel which are available to us. So, what are certain features of MS Excel? Now, as you can see my screen, there is an image which states and which helps us to understand the layout or the user interface of the Excel, where there are certain small, small options or groups which are available to us in terms of doing tasks. And there are certain button-like tabs which are available to us in terms of selecting what operation do I want to do with respect to Excel. So as you can see on screen that there's a home tab, there's an insert, there's a page layout. And we can also see there is a formula tab, data tab, review tab, view tab into our Excel. Now let's understand this with actually seeing what is Excel over here. Now I'll go and open Excel as a tool with me. So as I said, that Excel as a tool is an application. Now, what is the meaning of application? It's available into my software, into my laptops, into my personal computers in order to access. It's an application. It's an app which is available to me. So you can go into the search bar and type in Excel where you'll get that Excel would be available to us. And you can see it's an application which is mentioned over here. This kind of applications which are only available into your softwares, but not somewhere other. These are known as standalone applications. Now, what do you understand by something called as standalone applications? Now, standalone applications are something which is just available into your systems, but nowhere other. Now, how this is possible is... Let's say today I have my laptop, I've created some Excel file and I've kept it into my laptop and I'm traveling somewhere, but I want to access my file. The file is available into my laptop. I cannot access it somewhere from outside because the laptop is not available to me. I can only access the files when my laptop is available to me because it's being stored over there. The meaning of standalone applications are that they are only standing alone into your system. They are nowhere shared within different systems. That is the meaning of standalone application. And Excel is one of the standalone applications which is available to us. Now, what kind of applications are not standalone? If you all remember that we have something called as Google Sheets. Now, Google Sheets is something which is in the cloud of Google or Google system or Google Cloud Storage, where I can access this at any instant of time or from any system or any device if I have my login credentials with me for Google. So that's not a standalone application. That is a cloud-based application from where I can access my data from anywhere or from any system which I have. So Excel over here is one of the standalone applications which we have. Now, let me open it. So I've opened this Excel and this is a tab which has opened to us. This is what the home page of Excel looks like for us. Now, if you see, this is a blank workbook option. As said, workbook, workbook is helpful for us in terms of keeping the data, analysis of it, and creating multiple sheets of data in terms of doing multiple related operations. Now, why it is named as workbook? You remember Excel has inspired from registers, which is nothing but a book where the data is being stored. So similarly, when the data is stored in Excel into our systems, that file is known as a workbook because there is lots of work going on into one book. There are multiple sheets available. Now, if you see, there are certain more options available in order to just give you a gist of what is in Excel as an application for a familiarity purpose. Let's say if you are new to Excel and you want to understand the user guide of what is Excel, how to go to different tabs and what are the different tabs used for or certain basic operations which we can follow. So here are certain guidelines or I can call it as a manual which I can use in terms of understanding how Excel can be used in order to do certain operations. Now, welcome to Excel formula tutorial part, part query tutorial, and you can see pivot table tutorials. So if this tutorials needs to be available to me, if I don't know how to access the Excel, I would be able to do it from you. Now, 
you can see the recents available to me over here. These are certain recent files which were used by me. So this recent files would be available to me in terms of accessing it or using it directly from here. I can pin certain files. So let's say I'll pin this file over here. And this is pet. And when you go on this option, you'll see this file because it is being pinned. pinned. So it's an important file which I want to be at its top priority. So I've kept it pinned. But I can unpin it well as well. So let's go over here. And I can see there are different files. And if any file is shared with me. So if I have Microsoft 365, definitely there will be shared access which is given to me. So if anything is shared, would be available to me. But as of now, there is nothing shared with me. So no files are available over here. So let's go into recent and let's go into the blank work and open it up. So if you can see on the screen, what it is visible that it's a user interface. Now it's a user interface. When a user comes and explore this access, Excel, what kind of options are available for a user to work upon are being shown over here. So let me quickly help you understand that what are the user, what are the options which are available to us in terms of working with data and then let's get started. So if you see this small button-like operations which are available to us, these are known as tabs. And when I click on each one of them, this tab is being changing. Now, what does it mean? It's that each tab has different operation to be proceeded with. So if I go on home tab, you can see a horizontal bar which was available. So this horizontal bar, which is changing for each tab, is nothing but a ribbon. Now, what is a ribbon? Ribbon is something which will have lots of operations to be associated and managed with that tab. So in this home tab, you can see there are ribbons and there are certain sections which are available into our ribbons. These sections are nothing but ribbon groups. What is the meaning of ribbon groups over here? That each ribbon is accessing certain sections of data, such as if you see this group name is clipboard. So clipboard related operations are handled over here. This group name is font. So font related operations are handled over here. And then there is something called as alignment and so on. So you can see each group has small, small sections or icons available to them. And these icons are nothing but controls. Because each ribbon group is helping to control some or the other action, which we can do with respect to Excel. So the small actions are known as ribbon controls, which are helpful for us in terms of controlling the task and data or work to be associated with them. So if I go on each ribbon tab or each tab, you can see this groups as well as the control seems to be changing because each tab is associated with some different operations. So if I go on home tab, all the operations available to me would be related to formatting, handling, or deleting, inserting a sheet, sorting, filtering, and so on. If I go into insert, insert will allow me to create tables according to the Excel standards, generate pivot tables, recommend pivot tables, insert certain charts, slicers, text box, and so on. Then we have something related to layout. This layout as a tab helps me to understand how I can change the layout of my Excel workbook or the sheets which I have created. Then there is something called as formula tab, a tab which is associated with all the formulas and the calculated relate, calculation related operations which are there. Then there is a data tab, which is helpful for me in terms of doing data related operations. That is right from fetching data from different, different sources to refreshing it, making connections and then sorting, filtering, converting text to columns, as well as implementing certain data validation approaches, grouping them and also forecasting certain options. Then review. Review helps me to review the data which is stored within it. I can also add or protect my sheets or workbook from you. Now there is a view option that how the view of my Excel I would like to have. 
do I want to have grid lines? If I don't want to have, I can uncheck it. If I want to have a formula bar, if I don't want to have it, I can uncheck it. I want a page break that, what is a page break is when the page ends and the next page starts, a page break would be av available to me. There is a page layout available to me. So if I don't want it, it's fine that I can undo the task. And there are certain options of zoom in, zoom out, arranging them, freezing them and so on. So developer tab, as most of you will not have developer tab at the very beginning, but we eventually add when we start working with something called as macros. Now macros are recorded processes or we also call it as a development phase of something called as Excel. And then there is a help tab which will help us in order to contact to community or give certain feedbacks or understand the blogs which are related to Excel and so on. So these are certain tabs which are available to us in terms of handling Excel. Now, if you see, not only the tabs, these tabs are changeable. But when I go to file tab, this is something different, which is coming to us, where I can do operations related to files. That is, I can go to home, I can generate a new file, I can open different files, I can share these files, add different add-ins, get the info, save, save as, print options, and many more are available. Eventually, when we proceed further, we will be understanding the same. As we understood the tabs which were available to us, if you can see, apart from tabs, there are different more options available. If you go on the corner over here, there is an option related to saving, related to saving, undo, redo, and this is known as a toolbar. And this toolbar is known as a quick access toolbar available to us. Now, what is quick access? If I don't want to search certain options for me over here, but I want to quickly select it from here, I can have a quick access. By default, save, undo, redo operations would be available to us in the quick access. Now, this auto save as an option is recently added into the new version of Excel. But in the initial or the older versions, it is not possible or it's not available. So here, if you see, I can also customize this quick access toolbar. Now, customizing this quick access toolbar is I can get certain options over here itself. Let's say I'll add this ascending, descending. So if I have a data, I don't want to go and search where is an ascending and descending operation available to me. I can quickly access it from here in terms of doing the same. Now, as said, the name of the file when you open would be named as book. So unless and until you give it a name, you save it with certain different name, it will be named as book one, book two, book three, and so on. So eventually, there is a tab which you can see over here. And this is itself saying that it's a name box. Now, what's a name box? Name box is something which will tell me where is my cell. Now, what is a cell over here? If you can see, the data is spread across in grids. Grids of rows and columns. So here, if you can see, there are multiple columns available to me. And there are multiple rows available to me as such. So when I intersect my data between a row and a column, let's say, if you see, there is a column vertical thing is known as column and the horizontal alignment data is known as row. And if you can see a row and a column is intersecting somewhere and this intersection is known as a cell. Now cell is something where I can insert a text, I can format it, I can insert calculations and I can do lots of operations within this cells. So there are multiple cells which are available and on what location I am now would be available to me into my name box. That I am on H4, which means H column and fourth row. That says that I'm on H4, that is column H and row 4. So that is available to us over here, if you can see. So there is something called as formula bar. Now, what is this formula bar? Formula bar will show that what is behind the cell. Is there any formula associated with the same? If I show you with an example, let's say I write 4 and I write 7 and 
I write a calculation of 5 plus 7. Now remember, calculation in Excel cells starts with equals rule. We have done calculation into our calces and when we do calculation into our calces, we write certain numbers and we type in equals to at the end. But with respect to Excel, we always start with equals to in the beginning for the calculations bit. So here you can see I have entered the cell. So when I go in the cell, it, the formula bar is showing me 4, the value which is associated with the cell. If I show you another cell, it is showing me 7. That's the value associated with the same. And when I go to the next cell, I can see the value as 12. But there is a formula which is running behind the cell in the background and the formula bar will showcase me the same. So you can see over here that what is shown in the formula bar. So formula bar shows if there is a data, the data would be shown if there are values associated with the cell or formulas associated with the cell that will be shown in the formula bar for us. Now, if you see, there is one sheet which is available to us by default as Excel workbook can have multiple sheets. So I can create multiple sheets from here or I can use shortcut keys. Now, as you all know that shortcut keys are something or keyboard keys are something which is very primarily used in order to handle Excel. So how a shortcut key would be helpful for us in terms of adding a sheet or a new sheet into Excel existing workbook. So what I have to do is I have to control shift. I have to press shift and I have to press F11 key. Now function keys are available with everyone. So certain laptops do access the function keys directly, but certain of them doesn't. So if the function 11 key or any function key is not accessed directly, you can use Fn key, which is available into your keyboards. So if I type shift Fn and F11, you can see a sheet 4 is added for me. So if I do shift Fn and F11, shift 5 is added. Sheet 5 is added to me because for me, function keys which are available into my laptops are not directly accessed. So I'll definitely take help of Fn key, which is available. So this is how a new sheet has been added over here. And a sheet can have same information. A sheet can have different information as well. You can create multiple sheets into Excel. Now, this is called as a status bar. If you go below, this section is known as what? A status bar for me. Now, what's a status bar? Status bar will tell me the status of the data. What kind of status? Imagine these are the numbers which I have done. And I'm selecting certain numbers all of them. So if you see my status bar, there is an option available to me that it is calculating the average of the numbers or the range of cells selected. There is a count being calculated and then the sum of the same. So status of the data or the values which are selected within the range would be shown to me over here. So that's what the meaning of status bar is. Now you have the zoom in, zoom out option and page layout options over here as well, which you can use and utilize the same. So this was a basic overview for the interface of Excel. I hope this is clear with everyone. So like this video, subscribe to our channel and comment on the concept you want to learn next.